the Prime Minister. Well, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, it is that time of the year where we, uh, as we close the parliamentary proceedings for this year and before returning next year, that it is customary for us to, to express our thanks to all of those who have supported us in our work over the course of this year. Um, it has been an extraordinary year. I hope we never see another one like it, Mr Speaker. Um, it has been an extraordinary year, but when Australians are challenged in great ways, Australians always rise to the challenge. And uh, We said at the start of this pandemic that we've always considered ourselves to be a strong people and we're about to find out how strong we were. And indeed, Australians have been proven incredibly strong and resilient and caring and compassionate as they've sought to navigate their own way through with great support from government uh, to ensure that they can be where we are today in a situation where all around the world uh, Australia's record of coming through this pandemic has been incredibly strong. There is no country anywhere in the world that can claim a perfect record in dealing with a one in 100 year pandemic, Mr Speaker. Uh, but when it comes to Australia's performance and more significantly the performance of Australians, it has been extraordinary. Um, the lowest, one of the lowest fatality rates in the world. There are 30,000 more Australians here in this country at the moment who wouldn't have otherwise been here uh, were it not um, for the fact that our response has ensured that more Australians have been able to survive this terrible pandemic, which in so many other countries that has not been the case. And that our economy, and as we move into next year, um, we're in a position where the economy is, is, is strengthening once again. As the lockdowns are in the rear vision mirror and the economic impacts of those are in the rear vision mirror, and we look through that front windscreen together as a country, and we move into 2022 with confidence, Mr. Speaker. We're a confident people. We're an optimistic people. We always look to see the opportunity, and we always back ourselves in as a confident nation confident in our abilities and each other to achieve what we know we can achieve. It has been a year not only tested by the pandemic, but it has been a year where the situation globally, Mr Speaker, has been extraordinarily challenging and will continue to do so. It is a time, as I've reflected, as have other ministers, in particular the Minister for Defence, in highlighting that we have not seen such a time in the Indo-Pacific since the 1930s, Mr Speaker, and that has required significant responses from the government. And I want to thank the allies and partners with whom we work with in the Indo-Pacific, our great comprehensive strategic partners in ASEAN. They are our great friends, our neighbours with whom we share this region. And it was an honour this year that Australia was able to achieve the first ever comprehensive strategic partnership with ASEAN, Mr Speaker. Yeah. It speaks to Australia's place in the Indo-Pacific region as a trusted partner, as a trusted neighbour. And even now, even now throughout the Pacific, Mr Speaker, and we think of our Pacific family and we think of all those in the Solomon Islands especially, and we think of those AFP and ADF officers and DFAT officers who are up there right now seeking to secure the peace and stability and calm of one of our Pacific family of nations. As our responsibility is to them in our own region, I want to thank all of those and their families um, who are on service right now in the Solomon Islands um, for what they're doing for our Pacific family and indeed expressing the values of our nation and our care and concern for our Pacific family. The conclusion of AUKUS, Mr Speaker, has been a milestone event in Australia's national security. We enjoy an extraordinary relationship with the United States. We enjoy an extraordinary relationship, Mr Speaker, with the United Kingdom. And we continue to work together with them and all of our like-minded partners because we cannot assume in this world that an international order that favours freedom, Mr Speaker, will always endure. Mm. And that is why we together here in Australia, Australians all, Mr Speaker, one and free, standing up for the important issues of liberal democracy in our part of the world. Because, Mr Speaker, if we don't, who will? If we don't, who will? And we have and we will continue to do that. I speak of our partners and allies in the United States and in the United Kingdom, and of course we work so closely with them, as the Minister for Defence mentioned, um, in what was the largest single air evacuation by, Australian, uh, by Australia in Afghanistan, with 4,100 people lifted out of that awful, awful situation, Mr Speaker, and they are now, so many of them, 
um, who have not gone to other countries, Mr. Speaker. They're here in Australia and becoming Australians. And in those days of extreme pressure, Mr. Speaker, I'm, I'm truly grateful to the extraordinary work and support that was done uh, in the Department of Home Affairs, in, in the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade, uh, in, in the Australian Defence Force. And I was so privileged to be able to, when I went through AMAB on the way back um, from overseas just a few months ago, Mr. Speaker, to go there and to say thank you to all of those who were serving during that time and to see the, the pictures that were drawn of, by the young children who had been evacuated to freedom, Mr Speaker. It was truly moving. They were indeed truly grateful to Australia. And now those children are here in Australia, going to Australian schools and growing up Australian, Mr Speaker. And that says a lot about us. After 20 years in Afghanistan, after 20 years, there are disappointments. But at the same time, what our forces did in Afghanistan and the 41 Australians in particular who are lost there, Mr Speaker. We think of them at this time and their families and the service that they put in place and all of those who went with them. And this year they won't be there, but for many the memories of their time in Afghanistan will stay with them forever and for many it will haunt them, Mr Speaker, the veterans. And for all those veterans who are thinking of that time and indeed those who continue to serve, it is our duty in this place to reach out to them and to continue to support them in every which way we possibly can, and thanking them, Mr Speaker, for their service. Mr Speaker, it's been a year where we have dealt with many other challenges, the challenges of how we address the future energy economy, how we deal with the online world and how we make that safer for Australians, strengthening the opportunities in regional Australia, and I think it has been a a strong year for regional Australia. I'm sure the Deputy yeah. Prime Minister would agree, would have it. Mr Speaker, but it's a constant reminder that where once drought and bushfires have impacted regional Australia, even as we stand here today, floods and the ruination of crops, which were the next payment for those coming out of those earlier challenges, Mr Speaker, and then hope disappointed once again that regional Australians are a resilient people, rural Australians are a resilient people. Um, they are the heart of Australia, Mr Speaker, and I want to thank all of them for their endurance and their resilience and their care and compassion for one another. The disaster resilience response and recovery capabilities have been at heart the response to the Aged Care Royal Commission and addressing the very serious needs there, continuing on the record financial support for those in this country. Um, who, through no fault of their own, have grown up with disabilities that, in decades past, have meant that they could not even hope to have the same opportunities of other Australians. And the National Disability Insurance Scheme, Mr Speaker, seeks to put that right and to give them as much opportunity as we possibly can to enable them. Supporting the mental health of Australians, again, I thank the Minister for Health, but I also thank um, Pat McGorry, who has been a constant source of advice and counsel to me and the Minister for Health and many here. I want to thank my colleagues for their same encouragement and support on those issues. Addressing the safety of women here in this building has been an important issue. And I want to thank all the staff, all of our staff, Mr Speaker, who, who work here with us. And it is our commitment to ensure we will work together to secure a safer workplace for them. I look to the Minister for Indigenous Australians and I am reminded of, of the great true heart of this country, Mr Speaker, and I, I want to thank again those Indigenous leaders and elders and Indigenous Australians around the country who keep their culture alive, the oldest living culture in the world, Mr Speaker. It is something this country can be truly, truly proud of and truly grateful for. May we continue to seek to understand their insights, Mr Speaker, as we seek to take this country forward. Mr Speaker, they are extraordinary times. They are not times for confusion. They are a time for clarity, which we are seeking to provide. Mr Speaker, decent, hard-working Australians, generous and fair, they love their country. They wish to simply move forward, and we want to move forward with them into 2022. I'm very proud, Mr Speaker, of the members of this House, particularly in the most recent debate the Minister of Health has spoken of on Maeve's Law. It is always, as I'm sure the Leader of the Opposition agrees, when we come together on matters like this, the Parliament at its best, 
and I appreciate the work that has been done to bring that to a conclusion. A sense of gratitude should pervade this place at this time of year. I want to thank the premiers and chief ministers through whom I've worked over the course of this pandemic in this year, and we will meet again at the end of next week and then continue the important work of the National Federation Reform Council. I want to thank, Mr Speaker, again all the members of our Defence Force, not just serving in the Solomons, but elsewhere around the world and those otherwise who are in those places. Mr Speaker, I want to thank all of those members who are retiring uh, from this place at the next election and who have uh, indicated that to this House. And we've just heard from the Minister for Health, but there are many others, and, and they will have their opportunities, if some had, and I'd extend also personally my best wishes to the member for Fowler, Mr Speaker, with whom we've shared a good friendship over, over many, many years. But there are many others. I won't list them all, Mr Speaker. We know um, who they are, and we thank them for the great service uh, to this House. Um, Mr Speaker, I want to thank the uh, Chief Government Whip, the member for Ford, who does a terrific job. And at a time, as we were reflecting in our party room very recently, and for those members who have joined the House in 2019, this has not been an, a usual term. Uh, this has been an extraordinary term in terms of what members have had to endure, long separations from family, long times in isolation because of the various rules that have been put in place. Um, the same opportunities to uh, have that camaraderie and that uh, direct support, um, for one for each other, which is very uh, customary in this House. And for those of us who have entered this House in earlier times, have benefited from that. I do feel for the class of 2019 on all sides of the House, Mr. Speaker, who have had to seek to, to navigate their service in this place in a way different to those who came before them. And that has been very difficult for them. And I think they have felt at times quite vulnerable. And I want to thank the whips, certainly our whips, Mr Speaker, um, with Nick and Rowan as well, and the opposition whips, Mr Speaker, for the pastoral care and support that you have provided to the members here in this place. The job of the whip is just not to get us all in here to vote, Mr Speaker. The job of the whips are also to provide that care, counsel and uh, pastoral support to members, and they do a terrific job. And I can think of none better than the member for Ford, who has one of the kindest hearts, Mr Speaker, mm -hmm. in this place. Uh, Mr Speaker, can I also thank uh, the clerks of the House? Uh, Clarissa, thank you very much, and the, uh, the responsibilities that you have taken on, and to the deputy clerk and the assistants. Mr Speaker, to the sergeant at arms, thank you for your work over the course of this year. Um, it has been an interesting year for the parliament and all of those who serve our parliament here, the attendants and the so many others. Mr Speaker, thank you uh, for the way you have worked, both with you as new speaker and, of course, the former speaker, um, the member for Casey and the role that they have played. Uh, to the PMNC legislative team, uh, to the House uh, parliamentary liaison officers, uh, Mr Speaker, I, my thanks to them also in the Senate uh, the First Parliamentary Council, um, all of those staff who are, of course, retiring this year, the Deputy Clerk, Catherine Cornish, retiring this year after 27 years of service, uh, the Department of Parliamentary Services staff, David Watt, retired after 20 years, eight years at the Parliamentary Library, uh, Carla Turcic, uh, retired after 25 years of parliamentary broadcasting, uh, Michael uh, Shield, retired after 26 years also at parliamentary broadcasting. They'll both be leaving quite a, uh, a vacant space there to be filled by new newcomers, Mr Speaker. And there are other retirees, Philip McCappian, Eric Horwood and Visitor Services and Barry Smith, 14 years at the Hansard. Um, he'd have quite a book, Mr Speaker, if, um, if he chose to write one. Uh, to the opposition and, and their staff, can I extend to you the Leader of the Opposition and his family, uh, the manager of opposition business and all the opposition members and their staff. Um, all the very best for the Christmas and holiday season. I hope they have a very safe and refreshing season, Mr Speaker. It will be a very busy year next year, as we all know. Of course, to my team, Mr Speaker, to the Deputy Prime Minister and his predecessor, can I say thank you very much for your friendship and your support and the great strength of the coalition of the Liberals and the Nationals. That's a coalition we want, Mr Speaker. The other coalitions that could occur on that side, 
Not such a great coalition, yeah. Mr. Speaker, the Labor and the Greens. But the coalition here, Mr. Speaker, is a great coalition and has been in place for many, many years, Mr. Speaker. I thought that would get a reaction. I thought that would get a reaction. But I'll return to the I'll return to the true tone of this, Mr. Speaker. Um, so thank you to the Deputy Prime Minister, to the Treasurer, to the Treasurer, Mr. Speaker. I want to say thank you very much. A dear friend, we we shared a house for a few weeks here, Mr. Speaker, um, and uh, he I didn't see a tape measure going anywhere near the curtains during that time, Mr. Speaker, at the lodge. Um, uh, not once, not once, not that I saw. That's true, the member for Ballarat. Um, but, Mr. Speaker, I want to thank the Treasurer. He's a dear friend, as, is the, as, as are my colleagues who's, who I serve with. But uh, you rely heavily on your deputy leader of, the, of your party, and uh, this deputy leader has been such a, a great and loyal deputy leader. And I know he has worked closely with all of the colleagues in our Liberal parliamentary party and uh, sought to support them and ensure uh, that their interests and their issues have been raised and, and are well understood within our leadership. But a dear friend, and I wish him happy Hanukkah. Um, and I know he celebrates Christmas as well. So, um, Mr. Speaker, he gets the best of both worlds there. At least the kids do anyway. So I wish um, you all the best, Mr. Speaker, to uh, the deputy leader of the National Party and to the, the leader of the House as well, two great Queenslanders. I wish them well over the break and thank them for stepping up into the roles, particularly the leader of the House uh, and the service that he is providing us here. And I also thank him for the outstanding work that he's done since he's become Minister for Defence. He is a very long-serving uh, Minister for Home Affairs and Immigration and Border Protection, and that is, that, that is a, a series of lessons that we share. <laughs> Uh, but uh, as Minister Stop for Defence, he has been a tower of strength. Uh, to the Leader of the Government and the Senate, Senator Birmingham, and the Deputy Leader, Senator Cash, Mr. Speaker, thank you for their support in the other place. Can I also add a very personal thanks to the Minister for Foreign Affairs and the Minister for Women, uh, the, the uh, co-chair of, of the Cabinet Task Force on Women, Mr. Speaker. I want to thank um, the Minister for Women and uh, my dear friend Maurice Payne, Mr Speaker, for the tremendous work and support that he's provided to me and also Jenny, Mr Speaker, as a close friend. Thank you very much. Um, Mr Speaker, to all the coalition members and their staff, rest up, because next year we go forward together, as always, Mr Speaker, and making that go, boat goes faster, as we've always said. Yeah, yeah. Mr Speaker, I wish them well and their families and thank their families for all their many sacrifices over the course of this year. And those sacrifices, Mr Speaker, we will show next year together as a team how we come together to ensure that Australia continue to have the strong government and the good government that Australians deserve and need. Yeah. Mr Speaker, I want to thank uh, my Chief of Staff, Dr John Kunkel, and all of those who work in my great team there uh, for their hard work and effort, and I know they're looking forward to a break, and, uh, and particularly back there in the Shire. Uh, to Julie and all the team in my electorate office, thank you. So, Mr Speaker, there are many thank yous. The attendants, the federal police who look after us, particularly my own detail, and those who provide that support to, sadly, too many of the members of this place. We saw in the United Kingdom this year, Mr Speaker, uh, the death, the, the, the murder of a member of parliament. And I know that reminded us all that in our service of our nation, there are some risks that we perhaps underestimate. But, Mr Speaker, um, in that case, we were reminded uh, of those who keep us safe as members of parliament in this building and when we're out and about doing our duty. Uh, to the catering teams, the library, the Hansard and the support staff, of course, uh, the cleaners, particularly Anna and Maria, Mr Speaker, her sisters, and Lizia. Thank you very much. They've been there a very long time. I'll continue to seek to be as tidy as I can. Uh, Mr Speaker, this has been a challenging and difficult year. For our country and to you, Mr. Speaker, I wish you all the best and all the speakers' panel uh, for the work they have done here in this place. Uh, to the crossbenchers and uh, and to their families, I similarly extend my best wishes. Uh, the house is rising, but elsewhere in our country, Australians are facing down those floods, and our gratitude continues to be with them who are serving them. Um, we might have been separated by borders for these last few years, but those borders are certainly lifting as our vaccination rates are at, at uh, world high levels, Mr Speaker. We look forward to those being lifting and we look forward to Australia continuing to open safely so we remain safely open. 
Our hope and our prayer is for a, a quiet solar where there are neither fires or, or, nor floods. But if there are, Australians know that those who work across our government will be there to support them in their time of need. May it be a time of, of great peace, of renewal and refreshment, and may 2022 be a better year than that preceded it. 2021 is in the rear vision mirror. 2022 is the way forward, Mr Speaker. God bless and Merry Christmas to all. The Leader of the Opposition on Indulgence. Thanks, Mr Speaker. Well, it's been a bit of a tradition to stand up and observe that it's been a tough year for Australians, and unfortunately uh, that tradition uh, continues because it has been a tough year. Uh, we've gone from drought to bushfire to pandemic and lockdown and now to flood. Uh, Australians are still living in caravans after losing their homes in the fires and now having to deal with the rains of La Nina. Uh, farmers who got through the drought, and then we had the mouse plague, uh, they saw things coming good and now their bumper crops are getting smashed by rain. Uh, they're doing it, it tough. The thing that we've seen though uh, during the pandemic in particular is the resilience of Australians and their preparedness to make sacrifices for each other for their families, for their neighbours, and I particularly want to uh, thank those essential workers who have kept the country going during such a difficult time. Uh, we should value not just our nurses and our doctors and our police, but also I think I hope we never ever take our cleaners and the people who do uh, so much work to keep the whole economy and to keep the whole society running. Uh, I hope that we don't take them for granted. I want to thank the community organisations like Addy Road in my electorate, Reverend Bill Cruz, uh, other charities have really done it uh, particularly uh, tough and have helped so many people. I look forward to spending Christmas Day once again with Bill Cruz and 2,000 of our closest friends. Uh, it is indeed a, a, a wonderful occasion whereby people who are afflicted by, with homelessness, uh, with addiction, uh, with uh, tragedy, and in some cases just lonely, have somewhere to go on Christmas Day. It is the true Christian spirit that Bill Cruz and Exodus uh, represent, and this year they celebrate 50 years of providing service for some of the most vulnerable people in the inner west of Sydney, but wherever they come from, no one's ever turned away from uh, Exodus there at Ashfield. Um, I want to thank uh, the Prime Minister for his words, and I wish him and his family and all the families of the members and senators all the very best for Christmas. Uh, to you, Mr Speaker. It's a bit of a tough job, isn't it, from time to time? <laughs> uh, our job isn't necessarily to make it easier for you. Uh, but uh, it, it, it is a tough job, and I, I, I wish you well. Thank you. Uh, and I, I reiterate uh, my thanks for the former speaker who did such an extraordinary job. Uh, to everyone else on the speakers panel, uh, to our whip team led by the member for Fowler, we we said good things about him before. That's enough, Chris. <laughs> That's enough, mate. Um, and Anna and uh, and Deb in in the Whip's office and, of course, uh, the members for Lawler and Moira who assist in that job. Uh, to my mate, the Deputy Leader, uh, one can't hope for a more loyal Deputy Leader, uh, good friend, uh, someone who uh, I've developed a very close relationship with and someone uh, who I think will make an outstanding Deputy Prime Minister mm -hmm. at some time next year. To uh, the manager of opposition business, who I've known for a lot longer, uh, the member for, for, for Watson, uh, the longest serving ever member for op manager of opposition business. Um, he, uh, is, uh, he, is, uh, he, is a, uh, he is a good person. He will make an outstanding leader of the House. He does understand the standing orders. And uh, I, 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 I will, I will forego my, my customary sledging of his band and his musical capacity uh, on the basis of the, the Christmas spirit to his deputy, uh, the member for, for High Marsh, uh, to uh, my economic team uh, led by Jim Chalmers 
and Katie Gallagher, who have done such outstanding work. Uh, in the Senate, we've got these three amazing women, Penny Wong, Christina Keneally and Katie Gallagher. Uh, they are just quite extraordinary, uh, the work uh, that they do. And my shadow minister assisting me in the, in the Senate, uh, Don Farrell, who I've come to rely upon uh, very much for advice and, uh, and, and wise counsel, always. Uh, to all of, uh, all of uh, our team, it's been a, 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 tough, uh, a tough period uh, to be in opposition. Uh, we had to come into the parliament and we supported uh, every single piece of legislation that was put up during the pandemic, even though we regard some of it as being flawed. We said we wouldn't allow the perfect to be the enemy of the good because the national interest required that. And we did it. And we did it. Uh, without, without exception, uh, we did it, something that uh, those opposite don't always acknowledge. But they are, they are the facts of what happened. Uh, the fact is, though, that I think that our responsibility means uh, we're competitive at the next election. We're competitive. Nothing more than that. But it's a tough time to be uh, leader of the opposition, to be in opposition during a pandemic. Most oppositions around the country, I note Western Australia as an example, uh, have, uh, have not been competitive uh, at all in the lead up to an election. But we're in a position whereby uh, we will continue to hold the government to account and we'll put forward our constructive alternative offer to the people of Australia at some time next year, be it in March or in May. Mm -hmm. To all of the parliamentary staff, uh, the clerks, the Hansard staff, uh, the Parliamentary Library, the Department of House of Representatives, uh, the attendants, uh, the hard-working folks at, at, at Aussies and the staff cafeteria, everyone working at the coffee carts who really keep us going, uh, to the cleaners who do such an amazing job. Uh, to everyone here, um, particularly want to thank Joy, a cleaner who keeps my office presentable. Uh, thank you uh, very much. Uh, to uh, the com car drivers and staff, especially my Sydney drivers, Greg and Suzanne, who look after me uh, so well. Uh, to all the Parliament House Security and the AFP, we appreciate all that you do. And to our ADF personnel serving overseas, as we noted during question time. It is a particularly important time uh, for us to thank them. Uh, to the press gallery. Now, we don't always agree, but it is an important role that you play in a democracy, and uh, I, I certainly acknowledge that. To the uh, state premiers and chief ministers for their leadership during the pandemic, uh, I've made it a, 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 a principle not to criticise any of the state premiers. Uh, I think they've had a really tough job uh, along, with, uh, along with the chief ministers. Um, to all the parents who've had a tough job too, uh, dealing with uh, remote work and remote schooling, often at the same table. Um, I do want to thank my personal staff, led by Tim Gautrell, my Chief of Staff. Uh, Tim Gautrell was the campaign director in 2007. There's an omen there. And uh, I think that he brings that experience, uh, his experience as the campaign director for the marriage equality uh, postal vote that was held as well, uh, he's a class act. He's a good friend. He was my first campaign director way back in 1996 for Grainler. We go back a very long way. And when I became leader of the Labor Party, I uh, approached him and cheekily said it was a condition of uh, my uh, continuing with uh, that pursuit that he had to come, because that was the deal that uh, we, uh, we had come to some time ago before when he talked to me in the running once before. Um, Sandra Crow, my EA, I thank you for making me go to the right place at the right time. Uh, we re re really rely upon our personal staff, but all of my team, uh, Liz, who leads the media team, and uh, Jeff, who uh, plays such a key role in policy development, to all of them, I thank them very much. I thank my electorate, who without them, I wouldn't be here. Simple as that. Uh, I love. Uh, my electorate, the Inner West, it's diverse, it's multicultural, it's uh, a, a, a fascinating electorate, it's a difficult electorate, it's a very political electorate, 
and uh, I'm very proud to have lived there my whole life. Uh, to my son Nathan, uh, he turns 21 next week, and uh, I've been in politics his entire life. And uh, when I talked to Greg uh, Hunt uh, about uh, his family, we discuss it. it. It is difficult, uh, but uh, I look forward to, to being home. Uh, I, I thank uh, whoever did the parliamentary schedule for the fact that December 8 isn't a sitting day, and uh, I look forward to that. Uh, I look forward to December 11, which is the party, and uh, I uh, hope that it goes well uh, for for him. And I'm very pleased that he's able that he's able to have one uh, at, as well. Uh, I am very proud every single day of the young man uh, that he has become. Uh, he's, he's quite outstanding and he's had a difficult time as well. Um, he, of course, uh, he's studying uh, business at university. He hasn't been on the campus since 2019. And uh, like a lot of young people, uh, the period of their lives in which they should have been having the most fun of their lives uh, simply hasn't happened for them. And uh, it's been a difficult period. Uh, to Jodie Hayden, my partner, uh, we've spent considerable time apart uh, this year, uh, but I, I, I thank you uh, for uh, your, your friendship and your support. Uh, I do want to uh, wish everyone a wonderful Christmas. May it be a time of reunions, of love, of happiness, of relaxation, and may 2000 and 22 bring us uh, whatever we want in life. I guess people know what my wish is for. <laughs> the Deputy Prime Minister has the call. Um, well, uh, thank you, Mr Speaker, and I'd like to endorse the comments and thank all the people that the Leader of the Opposition thanked and the Prime Minister thanked, which leaves me with basically the cat and the dog and the rat and the roof to thank, because <laughs> everyone else seems to be thanked. But starting off on a more serious note, I'd like to I uh, thank my family, uh, obviously Vicky, uh, who has been a uh, great support to me, and Sebastian and, and Thomas, who have made this their home, uh, so much so that at one stage Tom, after having a shower in the uh, Deputy Speaker's office, decided we were standing there and we heard the door shut, and Luch managed to stop him just before he ran naked into this chamber, which would have been a remarkable addition <laughs> to the parliament that day. Um, to, to obviously my colleagues, I'd like to thank the leadership team of DLP, Bridget, um, to Drummy and Perrin for their hard work through the process, obviously to, to the deputy leader in the Senate, Matt, to Sam and Susan over there, to all our team here, to Michael, who uh, I know it's been a tough year. I really um, you know, thank you for the professional and diligent and decent way that you have, you have acted to Mark, to Pat, to Ken, to George, to mention Lou again, to Dr Dave, to Dr Dave, to Andrew, to Keith, Hogues and Michelle. It's, uh, it's been a, a great year to prepare for the next year, which will be an, an incredible year, and we are going to make sure that we give the best representation of ourselves and hopefully we will all stay there, but that is the will of the people, and maybe bring a few others down here to Canberra with us. Uh, to the staff, the ever-patient staff, uh, you've been such a professional team down here and in Tamworth, an incredibly professional team, and you carry me so well and you make me look vastly better than I actually am, and I thank you for that. I won't go through all their names because, as they know, I'm notorious at remembering them. Um, to the support structure in this parliament, to all the people you don't think about, imagine all the calls the ladies down on the switch get, the phones, the absolute crazy people ringing them up, angry people ringing them up and trying to deal with it. If ever you get a chance, you should go down and just say good day to them. Obviously, to the people of New England and to the great, to the great part of New England that wanted to be its own state um, and should have. And should have. And should have. There's, all, there's still hope. Um, they should have. They, uh, you've been so patient, uh, allowing me to go away and do other jobs. But you know, I love, I love the people of New England. 
I, was, I love the, the people of the state of Queensland who gave me an initial job, but to come home to New England and the support I get on the street and in every corner of it as we try to do our very best job for them, uh, I really appreciate that. And I can't wait, wait to get back after this and go back and do as, as best service I can in the spare time we have. And I've already mentioned the staff there. I won't go through all the opposition, but I will acknowledge um, the member for Fowler, Chris Hayes, who actually has been a good mate over a long period of time. And I wasn't there uh, for you. I had another job to do. I was watching you on the screen. But here's the one person that you can have absolute confidence in him. And you can go to him, say what you need, and it goes no further than Chris. So I thank you, Chris, and especially in, uh, in tougher times that I've had in the past, uh, you, were a, you were a mate. Um, to the media, I just have to mention here, you can make of it what you like. The, um, <laughs> No, uh, thank you so much for your, re for your representation of our nation. The fourth estate is a vital part of our democracy, and if we don't have that, we don't have a democracy. And that's why I'm so fervent about trying to chip uh, Facebook and the others to try and get some of the advertising yeah. revenue back in your direction, because you are the people who actually do the job. Uh, there, is a, there is a certain group. There are a lot of people over Christmas who don't get time off. They work. They're the doctors, and they work. They're the nurses, and they work. They're the ambulance drivers and the policemen, and they work. They don't get time off for Christmas, but they love their families just as much as ours, but they are dedicated to the task at hand. So I thank you for that and for the sacrifice that you're about to make. I also um, ask that Christmas is such a great time for so many, but the worst time for a few. For a few, it's the loneliest time of the year. It's a time where they realise that they are divorced, they realise they are widowed, they realise they are homeless, they realise they are away from every, anybody, and if you get in any opportunity to reach out to those people, and I worked for a long time for Sir Vincent, Sir Vincent de Paul, then you will get more out of that than you would know. You will get more out of that, that's, that small act of compassion, than you would know. So um, I, thank, I thank all those people who assist in that. Finally, or second, or, or, um, uh, second, finally, um, the Australian people. You have to think of some group that involves everybody else. So I won't thank the people of the world, but I'll think, thank the Australian people for their tolerance, their tolerance of us. Uh, this is real. We are servants of them. This, this, is, this is their house. We merely work here. And so to the Australian people who are about to go into the process of dealing with an election, uh, we, I, I, we hope that we um, in this adversarial chamber, which it is supposed to be, which it is supposed to be, I thank uh, I thank them for the for the role that they play, all of them, in making our nation a, a, a better place. And I conclude with uh, we have been welcomed to country in uh, in our area. We it's, uh, it goes through, it starts with Yama, but I always remember the end, and it's Yaren Army Barai, which means walk with God. Walk yeah, yeah. with God. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, so I say in conclusion, in Kamiroi, Yaren Biyami Barai. Well said. I was going to make a, a speech on behalf of all those uh, in Parliament, but um, uh, if you work in the building, thank you very much for your service to uh, the Commonwealth and also to the members of Parliament and Senators. Thank you very much and Merry Christmas. Uh,